Warning, the video you are about to watch is the sum of my own experience. I may do things differently, I may do things wrong, but I do what works for me. So sit back and enjoy the video. Hey guys, it's Mudge here and we're back in DCS. Um, now, as you can see, we're sat in the cockpit of the A-10C. Um, now, this is an aircraft I've been um, avoiding. Uh, through a lot of my videos. Um, I've, I've really wanted to be doing a video on this for quite a while, but um, yeah, I, I guess it's just taken me a little while to kind of work up to it. Now, the A-10 is an aircraft I've been flying ever since it came out. Ever, ever since it came to DCS, I was part of the beta and, uh, you know, I've been flying it ever since. So, you know, I, I kind of feel as though I know what I'm doing in the aircraft, you know, I've kind of, you know, uh, operationally I suppose you know I, I'm kind of confident in, in that I know what I'm doing but um, actually kind of trying to, to explain what I'm doing why I'm doing it with this thing is incredibly hard. Now the A10C is an incredibly easy plane to fly you know once you get it in the air and you're flying around really easy you know it, it, it's, it's such a, a a gentle kind of aircraft to fly you can throw it about and it, it doesn't snap roll you know it, it's it's it is a, a forgiving aircraft to fly but the scary thing with this aircraft and I suppose what puts a lot of people off flying this thing full real is the sheer technical complexity of this aircraft now flying things like the MiG-21 uh, the F-86 Sabre you know they're well, with the MiG-21, it is somewhat of a complex aircraft, but it has absolutely nowhere near the technical complexity that this aircraft does. And that's kind of why I've been steering clear steering clear of it a bit in these videos. Um, because to, to kind of try and explain it all, you know, it, it takes a lot of time. <laughs> More than anything, it takes a ridiculous amount of time. So my objective is I'm going to do a few videos um, in a row. I'm not going to do this all in one. So today I'm going to be taking a look at starting this thing up and what some of the systems are and, and what they do. Now even though I've been flying this aircraft for a very long time, I still don't know everything. Okay, and I, I'm going to be absolutely honest with you that there is a lot this aircraft can do that I still don't have a grasp of, or I still haven't managed to, to learn how to, to fully implement a lot of the systems. But I know enough to get by, and that's what I want to share with you guys. You know, rather than baffling you all with um, with TLAs. Now, TLA, you're going to come across this a lot. It means three-letter acronym, and in the military, there's a TLA for everything. Okay, when you join the military, you're given two things: you're given a number and a TLA, and everything has a TLA. And I mean, I spent ten years in the RAF in stores, and I tell you, you know, the the amount of three-letter acronyms that they have, everything. You know, if if you can put a three-letter acronym to it, it doesn't even have to be three letters. It can be any amount of letters that you want. You know, but if if you can shorten it down to just a few letters then that's what you're going to do. <laughs> so, I mean, just looking around the cockpit here, these are MFDs or MFCDs. If you look in the manual, multifunctional displays or multifunctional colored displays. You've got the HUD or heads-up display. You know, um, you got the CDU down here, which is something that's incredibly freaking complex and scary. But CDU uh, stands for Command Display Unit, something like that, I believe. I don't know. I've forgotten already. Um, but yeah, then you've got UHF, VHF, TGP, LGP, GBUs. It's just like three-letter acronyms coming out of bloody word work. So we're going to try and make some sense of all of that. Um, so yeah, let's get started anyway. That that's enough waffling, isn't it? So right, starting this thing up. Now I'm gonna do this my way, okay? Um I suppose that there's checklist ways of doing this, you know, there'll be people out there that say, Oh, you're not doing this right, you need to do it this way, you need to do it that way. You know, I do what works for me. And that's what we're gonna do now. So Let's get started. Now, the, the first thing that we need to do, because uh, we're cold and dead here, kind of sat on this lovely apron in the middle of somewhere that's now been bombed to hell, um, so we need to put some power in. So, now these switches down here are the power switches. So, 
yeah, uh, this is your battery power engine generating APU switches, all this type of stuff. Um, that's down here. So the first thing that you need to do is switch on the battery, and that's in the bottom right hand corner. It says battery power on the switch, which is really handy. So we turn that on, and we get some lights. Come on. Um, now, the way I do this is that I always start the engines first before I start anything else. Um, now there's a reason for doing this, okay? Now if you start booting up all of the computers and things like this, you get the APU up and running, you know, you get the MFDs loading, data, the CDU starting doing its checklist. Um, when, you, when you spool up the engines, it draws all of the power away from the APU, the batteries and everything to draw that draw that engine and it can cause computer crashes or, you know, in, in real life I suppose it, it can cause surges in the aircraft which cause the, the computers go on and off and it, it can cause all sorts of errors so it is good practice to generally start the engines first before you start loading up the computers and doing things like this so, anyway, so that's the battery on the next thing to do is to start the APU now the engine gauge or the engine management switches and fuel switches they're all over here um, so you know, we're, we're kind of orientating around the cockpit a little kind of haphazardly here uh, because there is just so much to it. So what we need to do is turn on the fuel boost pumps which are these four switches here. Now I hope I'm not going too fast here but like I said there is a ridiculous amount to get through with this thing, it is just crazy. So trust me on this, so these are the, this here is the fuel management station if you want to call it that. This is where you've got um, everything to do with fuel. It's all managed through this panel here. Uh, this panel here handles everything to do with the engine management. So, you know, uh, every, this panel here is to do with avionics and all this type of stuff. And then you've got radios. And then over here you've got life support and more radios and... Ah, scary. Okay, so anyways, off track. So anyways, so the steps so far, power on. Over here, fuel switches on these four bottom switches here. Then we switch on the APU, and then you get a, a lovely little whirring sound, saying that the, you know, so that you know that the APU is coming to life. And if you look down here, you've got the APU gauges here, and these two bot gauges moving up. So this one will go up to 100%, and then when that's at 100%, it means that the APU is um, on and running. So just wait for that thing to spool up. There we go. So that's there or thereabouts at 100%, which means that the APU is up and running to speed. Now, APU is uh, is auxiliary power unit. Now, it is just like a, a small engine, I just guess, like a small turbine engine uh, hidden inside the bowels of the aircraft. And, you know, you start up this thing first, and it generates power to the aircraft, and also compressed air for starting up the engines and things like this. So, the next step is to actually turn the power that that uh, APU is generating into the aircraft. So you turn on the APU power switch here. And then when you turn that on, more things start happening in the cockpit, uh, more of the gauges come to life, things like this. So now the aircraft has quite a lot of power going into it. So the next stage, or the next thing that we need to do is actually get the engine started. So like I said, I'm running this through the way that I'd start this up myself. Okay, so. What we're going to do is start with the left engine first, and to do that what you do is hold right, alt, and home. So right, alt, and home, and then you see there that the left throttle moves forward. And then if we look at the left engine, the turbine starts spinning. Yep, so there we go, that's spinning, that's good. And then we can look at the gauges down here. And then you've got your fan speed, exhaust temperatures, uh, fuel flows, and things like this all down here. And then for the left hand side they should all start spooling up. Ah, guess what, I forgot to switch on the inverter because I'm a freaking idiot. There we go, so switch on the inverter and now that's spooling up. Yeah, should have done that first. So anyways, when you turn on the battery, turn on the inverter, that's always a good idea. So as you can see anyways, you've got uh, engine temperature fan speed's going to start going up there, um, well, you know, all mean different things, turbine speeds, exhaust temperature, anyways, that's all how your engine's doing now now, so that's the left engine's now up and running and up to speed, which is great, and then we'll do the same to the right engine by holding right control and home, and then that throttle comes up, and now that we've turned on the inverter, <laughs> good tip there, 
you'll start seeing these uh, uh, these needles start spinning around, which means that the right engine is now coming to life. And if we have a look, then the turbines will start spinning there, which is fantastic. Okay, so we'll just wait for those to come up to speed. <coughs> So it'll surge up to about 60-70% and then it'll shoot back down to uh, well that seems like temperature yep, there we go. So that then goes back down. So that's the uh, the right engine now started. So that's both the engines started. So now what we can do is switch off the APU and then draw power from the engines because they're up and running. So what we'll actually do first and prepare for some beeping is turn on the engine generators, turn off the APU generator, and then turn off the APU. So now all power to the aircraft is now generated by the engines, which is kind of what we want. Now the next step is turning on and managing all of the avionics in the aircraft. Now, the first thing to do is to switch on the CDU, uh, because without this you can't do anything. So there you've got the CDU and the EGI power switches. You need to turn both of them on. Then after a second it'll come up here saying CDU startup bit test. Now bit is another TLA because we love TLAs and it stands for built-in test. So this is now going to go through a test. It's going to make sure that it's working and that it's actually all right. And then as soon as it's done its uh, bit test, it'll start um, going through doing its uh, alignment and processors and everything else that the CD does. It's all magic. <coughs> so while that's doing its bit test, what we'll do is now turn on the rest of the avionics. So um, what we've got down here is uh, three switches. We've got the um, CICU power switch, JTRS power switch, and uh, another one which is to do with the IFFCC or control computers and all this type of stuff. So uh, as you can see now, this, these two switches go straight up, which gives some power. This one here's got a test mode as well. Now, when you switch in test mode, you get a little message up on the HUD here saying "Engage Pre-Flight Bit Test." And then you hit Enter, and then that puts um, the, the in-flight computers, things like this, into another bit test, and that will all be displayed here on the HUD as it's going through testing everything on the aircraft. Now, what we can also do now is switch our NFDs on and we'll stick those on today. So while the CDU is still doing its um, bit tests and things like this, these will come up in blue, but then uh, momentarily they'll come up with some black screens with other data and lovely information and stuff like that. So there we go, which they have done now. Now this is the first page that you're presented with when you switch on your MFDs. Pull up, pull up. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Altitude, altitude. That's good to know. <laughs> so that's bitching Betty waking up and saying good morning. Um, right, so anyways, uh, anyways, this comes up saying DTS upload. Now, DTS is like a data cartridge. Now, every pilot, before he gets in this plane, he'll always go through brief briefings and plannings, and he'll sit in front of the laptop for a couple of hours and draw lines on maps and things like this, and then it all gets uploaded onto a cartridge. Then he comes out, with, out to his aeroplane, there's a little black box in the back of the aircraft he plugs that cartridge into, and then he needs to pull all of the information off that cartridge into the plane, and that's what this is. So the DTS upload loads information for the tactical awareness display, the TAD, uh, Data Stores Management Systems, or DSMS, uh, targeting pods, and all this type of stuff here, TGP. So what you do is that you hit, oops, wrong one, load all. Now when you hit load all, all of the little diamonds next to these disappear. Then once everything's been loaded, once all of that information from the cartridge has then been pushed into the aircraft, then you'll get the dots will reappear, which should happen any second. There we go, so the dots have reappeared, and that means that everything from that data cartridge has now been loaded into the aircraft, which is absolutely fantastic. And the um, the flight computer's uh, finished its built-in test as well, so what we can do is just move that switch into the upwards position, and then that activates the heads-up display, or HUD, which is fantastic. Now the next thing to do, uh, we can turn this to TAD, or the Tactical Awareness Display, which brings up the map. And then what we'll do on this side is that we'll change that to CDU, and then this gives us a, a carbon copy of what's going on on this screen on here. Now at the moment it's going through ground alignment, and these numbers here where it says 3224, these are counting up. 
uh, and then once they get high enough um, this that says INS nav ready will start flashing then that means that the um, that the in-flight computers and navigation systems and all of that are aligned with whatever they need to align with and everything's great. Now we still got quite a few things to go through here so as you can see we've got uh, a few more lights on here and things that we need to kind of go through. Uh, also what I want to do as well, ooh, ooh, hello truck, I was going a bit mental there, uh, is that we can turn this to uh, show flight plan and steering point information or other stuff like that. So. You know, that sort of stuff that now brings up like your, your waypoints and things like this on your um, TGP. So now what we need to do is turn on the dampers. So you've got your and um, pitch dampers, which you turn on there. Then there's a button just below that there that says take off trim. So TO trim. You press and hold that and what that does is that it puts all of the control surfaces into, uh, well, take off trim. So that when you're rolling down the runway and you pull back on the stick, you're, you're not going to kind of flip over and die, which is all about. Now, as you can see, this has come up saying INS nav ready, which means that its alignment or its, um, yeah, its alignment is now finished and it's shown 4008 there, which means, you know, it's done its job. So what we need to do is now turn this from ground alignment into nav mode, and we do that by clicking nav. And as you can see, the um, HSI or horizontal situational awareness indicator, I forget what HSI means. Anyways, that thing aligns up with uh, where it needs to be, and everything's right there. Now, we've still got a few more things to go through. Um, now, what we need to do next, now this is quite an important one. Uh, you can't actually kind of get the in-flight computers to work without doing this. As you can see, this is in HAAS Fast Direct mode, and at the moment, you need to turn it on to EGI. And once you've turned it on to EGI, you've got two little kind of buttons behind the throttle here. In fact, if I uh, hold in the brakes and push this up a little bit, you've got um, two switches there that you need to push upwards. And then they turn on uh, more to do with guidance and flight stability and things like this. So now we've only got two more switches, which is the anti-skid and the seat armament. So anti-skid is this little switch here, which uh, stops you from skidding around, I guess. <laughs> and then the seat armament is this yellow switch here, which you've put down. And now, when you need to eject, you will, which is absolutely fantastic. So now, what we need to do as well is close the canopy, which is on this little switch here. So we'll press that down into close. And as you can see, our canopy then comes down. Woohoo! There we go. And you can check your makeup in the mirrors if you need to, or you can just fold those away because they get on my nerves. Now there's a few more steps that we need to go through before we can uh, roll out. Now the navigation's aligned; every all of the systems are, are mostly on, you know, so we are kind of safe to fly right now. You know, the aircraft will take off and fly around as you need it to. But there's a few more systems that we need to switch on first. Now, <clears throat> the next thing to switch on is the countermeasures. So we'll just turn that into standby and it switches this on. Um, now, this is something that I'll go over in a later um, tutorial, I suppose, is programming those countermeasures and what all of these mean. And then again, we've got more things up here which show uh, our countermeasure status at the moment, which is off because it's only in standby. Um, now, on this side, you've got more things to do with uh, light panels, um, oxygen, you can turn on there. Uh, and then you've got more to do with environmental controls, lights, switches, everything like this, which we're not going to touch right now, don't really need to. Then you can come down here and then switch on, oops, as my track, oh, goes mental again, woohoo! Uh, so I'll just uh, pause that there, and then you've got uh, switches down here for turning on all of the radios, which there seems to be about 10 million of. Um, and then you can program in your various frequencies for VHF, UHF, uh, VHF2, and things like this. You know, so there's more radios than Radio Shack, and we don't really need to kind of play around with those at the moment. So uh, the last thing to do is to move the flaps into takeoff, which is there, and you can have a look to see that the flaps have actually come down on the wing. And then, <coughs> yeah, do uh, do 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 do. Uh, things I like to do as well is um, turn on the laser arm now, you know, you can leave that to later, there's no need for that, but I turn that on, and the TGP on. The reason I turn the TGP on is because it takes about three or four minutes for it to actually kind of warm up and get ready to work. Now the TGP is the targeting pod, which is um, 
this groovy thing on the wing here and you use that for uh, finding targets and lining up weapons and dropping bombs but we'll go into that in a later episode and then you can um, uncage the standby artificial horizon just in case this one decides to go wibbly um, so yes well uh, that's the aircraft now started and ready to take off. I don't think I've forgotten anything. The Christmas tree's blank, CDU's aligned, oxygen's on. We're all good to go. So I'm going to leave this here um, for this part. And then on the next one, uh, we'll talk about um, kind of just uh, taking off basic flight and, and using a few more of the systems. <coughs> and then we'll. Um, We'll spend a, a few more hours going over the weapon systems and, and what this aircraft's capable of. So, I hope that you've learned something through this. Um, you know, my, my objective with this is just to try and make this a bit more understandable. Um, I know this has been fast, but again, it's, it is it is a lot to do. There's a lot to take in. Um, if there's any questions or anything that you'd like me to go over separately with this, then please by all means let me know because, like I said, there, there is a lot to cover. And I know I'm going to miss things, I know I'm going to do things wrong, I'm not going to do them in the right procedures, but I do kind of what works for me and, and you know, what makes it kind of more easy for me to understand while I'm, while I'm doing this. So, I hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, there will definitely be more to follow soon. Uh, so I'm going to leave this here and say thank you very much and we'll see you next time.